What's up everyone, it's DV. I've got a new video to show you how to trade in Roblox Islands. This is an updated version from the last video I did, which is actually, it's been a while and we didn't have vending machines back then. Back then we were still doing chess trades and now we don't have to worry about that. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple things. I'm gonna show you where you can trade, how to trade, what's worth trading for. So before we get into that, be sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button if you're new. And let's get to it. Let me tell you what kind of traders there are. So I think there's four different types of traders. First type of trader, the average person that needs something they want something in particular so they're like hey i really need for example some crystallized iron because i want to be able to finish crafting something that i'm working on so maybe you're trying to craft a war axe or maybe you need some buff crystals and because you want to make a hammer or something like that so that kind of player is really going to trade on an as needed basis they're looking for something very in particular they probably don't have a lot of coins yet they have you know maybe maybe a million maybe less maybe less than a million that that kind of player is really a casual type of trader another kind of trader that is a step up from that is someone that just really wants to make some money so they're kind of a beginner trader they want to earn some money so they just kind of casually put up vending machines and sell whatever they have in their inventory of excess and that they have but they're not really grinding for things they don't really have any kind of you know direction i would call that a casual trader and then there's a third level of trading which is i would consider someone that maybe is a little bit more on my i'd consider myself in that category where i actually will go and set up a shop for buying and selling but you remember my old shop where i used to have like the sell side and then we have a buy layer on top so that'd be someone that's a power trader they know what you know they grind for stuff they trade for things they resell so that's a reseller and i would consider myself quite the reseller i i, I will buy stuff to sell it quite often and that's how i make a lot of money so the fourth type of trader is a little bit more extreme i would say they're the type that all they do they don't actually work on building their um, islands up to a point where they're really proud of it they don't really build to just have things to have them what they do is they will go out and aggressively flip items what that means is they are bulk trading so they're gonna go out and buy you know up to 500 to a thousand maybe more smelters they're gonna buy up to a thousand starfruit seed they're gonna buy 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 and sell and sell and they're gonna flip items to the point where they're getting billions and billions and billions of coins and that is an extremely difficult that, that's like a full-time job that's i'm not even to that degree because i make content on youtube right i make videos so if i if i didn't create content yeah that'd be kind of cool and be fun but it's a lot like stock trading those players you know play this game like they're stock traders and i don't really play this game like that so let's revisit that in order so the first type of trader is someone that really just needs something in particular so maybe so maybe you're like over here you're like oh i want to make a new you know spell book well you're going to go and try to find some crystallized aquamarine and maybe if you don't have any spell books yet you're going to go and try to trade these so how do you do that well there's a couple ways you can trade for items. If you're looking for one thing in particular and only one thing in particular, the vastest way to do that is through the Discord. So the Discord is going to give you the ability to search and put out requests specifically for what you're looking for, right? So that's the best way because you're going to be able to search through listings. You're going to find people who have the stock and it's the fastest way you can get items. Well, but you might say, well, DB, hey, I don't have Discord or I'm too underage. I'm under 13, so I can't use Discord or my, my parents won't let me use Discord. And that is great that you say that because you should never use discord if you're under 13 because you can get banned and you know and it, and it is against terms of service so in that case here's two ways i would do it now that we have the popular islands list you can actually click this and you can discover all kinds of islands that have potentially marketplaces so i'm connecting one of these randomly and we'll see what kind of um, shop that they have so you can ask them if they have any spell books typically in this scenario you're not going to be able to ask other players if they have spell books because it's going to be a big pain in the butt to try to coordinate with them because you are on this person's server right but you can see they, they have title spell books and you can see how much they're selling them for but what you could do is you can ask the owner of this island, you know, hey, do you have any uh, spell books for sale? And that would be a really good way to be able to get your items now. So if you're looking to sell something, so say you have a bunch of spell books and you really want to sell stuff, you can just browse these and it's a really, really fast way for you to sell things is by going to these top islands. Um, but if you're trying to acquire something, the other way I would say is just to hop different public servers. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to go ahead and exit here and then you're just going to, you know, randomly hop servers. So another way you can do it is is whenever you go to servers, you can do something like this. You can, as long as you have one of those items already, then you can set up a vending machine to buy items. Say you already have one crystallized iron and you wanna buy more of them. Well, you can go do this and you can say, okay, so I'm gonna put in a crystallized iron. I'm gonna set my machine to sell mode because people, I want people to sell to me. Then you set your price, right? So you're gonna set this up to like, I want, I, I'm willing to pay 120,000 for these. So let's go ahead and auto click this up to 120,000 because that's what I'm willing to pay. And it's a lot easier if you're doing this 
and you're paying that kind of price and you're not trying to undercut people, you're actually paying what it's worth. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit using my price guide. If maybe I wanna buy five of these. So if I'm gonna buy five of these, five times 120,000, we're looking at 600,000, right? I'm gonna put in 720,000 to put some padding in. We're gonna go ahead and invite some bunch of people. So we wanna see if a bunch of people will sell me some crystallized iron. So I'm gonna invite all these players that are on the server. They are here randomly. So I'm gonna go ahead and invite them. They're gonna start pouring in here. Now, if you do have the pro pass, so if you have the pro game pass, the other thing you can do with this new popular feature is you can actually publish your island. What that does, if I hit publish, it'll show up over here, right? So it'll show up over here and I can get up to 60 players onto my server at once. It's pretty magical, but you do have to have currently it's in pro only for pro uh, game pass owners. So if you don't know what that is, if you go over here, you can actually get the pro rank. I, I'm not sure if they're going to unlock that for, ever, for everyone. I'm, I'm sure they're going to unlock that for everyone eventually, but that is a really, really great way for you to get even more players in here. So you can see people are already selling it to me. There's already two in here and I can buy potentially, you know, five more. All you got to do is just invite everyone. If you join different servers, you can go around and just invite them. So set your machine up, make sure it's uh, close to spawn. I didn't do that. I should have actually put it up there so they didn't have to drop down and find me. So technically the best place to put it would have been up here. So they spawn up here, right? So you should have put it right here so that they don't have to go very far. So that way they can say, oh, there's vending machines. And then they can just sell it right there without having to explore your island. That's incredibly important for trade. So you can see here, let's see, has anyone else sold? So no one else has sold yet. That's probably because the supply is really, really low on crystallized iron right now. So that covers the first type of, so I think that covers the first type of trader, right? The first type of trader is going to be someone that really just trades just because they need something. Now let's head to the second type of trader. The next type of person is the type that says, well, okay, I've got a bunch of stuff in my inventory. Maybe I've acquired some swordfish. Maybe I've made some iron. So I'm just going to sell those things. That's the second type of trader. And that's the type of trader you'll often see, like they'll have maybe six vending machines set up like this. And then they'll have a couple more over here. And maybe they have like a couple that are for sale. Some of them are empty. You've seen these before. And then the other thing, you know, that you'll see then they put like a couple items in there. Well, that's the type of, that's the second type of category. They're not much different from the first category. The problem with this kind of trader, and if you're this in this category, you're kind of hurting yourself because you could be so much more successful in the game. If you knew how to trade properly, you would make millions. If you're placing things like mushrooms or iron or flower seeds or any of these items inside your vending machines, and you have the potential to sell bigger stuff, then you're kind of missing out. First thing you should be doing is keeping an eye on the price guide. What is hot right now? What is in demand? What is going up? What's trending up and what also is new. So what you should be doing is prioritizing things that are in demand. And typically what is in demand is anything new or rare. So what I mean by that is with the last update, we have jukeboxes, right? So if I were to put this in buy mode, let's get it up to, let's say I want to sell this for, let's sell some jukeboxes. Let's see what it's going for on the price guide. Okay. So they're selling for about between 50,000 and 250,000. I'm going to actually sell these for 50,000. They're actually worth a lot less in my opinion, but they do take a little bit of wood to make, which is okay. So let's go ahead and put this in for 50,000 and then we're going to drop these in. Now these are highly demanded items. So a lot of people want these right now. The other type of item people want crystallized iron, right? So if I were to go over here and put crystallized iron, crystallized iron to me is worth 120,000. You can see how fast it sold. They, they bought that right away. And that's not just because I'm a YouTuber. It's because they want it. Trust me, I've, I've tried to sell junk at times and most of the time they don't buy it. So let's go ahead and sell some crystallized iron for 120,000. So let's see, we got this. So we're gonna go ahead and sell crystallized iron for 120,000. This will sell out pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and put that in there. And so you just need to know what is going to be in demand. On top of that, you can actually bump this up more. If people are buying it at 120,000, and bump it up and then continue to test your prices. It's not bad to go high. You're going to get some criticism. You're going to get some flack. But if you think crystallized iron's worth 200,000, put it up for 200,000. If no one's buying it, drop it down to 180,000, drop it out to 160,000 until someone actually buys it. And I'm not saying to do that right away. So you need, you shouldn't be doing that in a minute. You should be doing that every, you know, I'd say every maybe five servers or so that you go to maybe 10 servers, at least over several hours of trading, you could do that. You can see here, let's see if people have bought. Yeah. So so there's been four sales already of this. So you can see, I just grabbed that money and I could actually, if people are, you know, there's people buying it at that. So we'll go ahead and leave it in at that. So over here though, if I wanted to go and sell, say, I think slime keys are maybe worth a hundred thousand. Let's go and test that out. So let's see if, uh, you know, slime keys are worth a hundred thousand that people are trying to list it. People are trying to list it for a hundred thousand, sometimes a million, but let's see if it's worth a hundred thousand. Let's go and test it out. So let's see a hundred thousand. Let me get some slime keys here. Let's go ahead and drop those in. 
All right, let's put a couple in. So we're gonna put five in at 100,000. Let's try it out. Let's see, did anyone buy it for 100,000? Not yet, because I don't think it's worth 100,000, but look, the, the crystallized iron literally just sold out. They just they just bought it. So you can see here, someone just bought all those. And then let's see if anyone's buying the slime keys. So they don't believe it's worth 100,000. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring it down and I'm gonna bring it down to 80,000. Let's see if anyone buys it. I think it's worth 80,000. So let's bring it down to 50,000 and see if anyone bites at that. So that is how you really test your market. Yeah, someone thought it was worth 50,000. So they bought all those. So, you know, you can see right there, that's the current. Maybe that's close to the value that it's worth. At least a lot of players here thought it was worth 50,000. I actually, that what that tells me is it's either worth 50,000 or more. So you could actually be really patient with it and keep it at 100,000 then. Because 50,000 100,000 is not a huge range, at least for most players that can afford to buy a 50,000 slime key. Any rare limited items are typically going to be purchased by players that have a lot of coins. So the next piece I wanna talk about is the third type of trader, and that's the type that's like me. So in this case, what you're gonna do is you're gonna find they're going to have um, two types of, of machines. And typically what you're gonna see is they're gonna have a series of vending machines right here that are gonna be um, for players to sell to. And then they're going to have a series of machines over here for players to buy from. And what you're gonna find is they're gonna be going back and forth, restocking as players sell, they're going to restock over here and sell again to make another profit. And what you're gonna do if you're a player like me, you're gonna focus on the valuable items, the items are, that are in demand. You're not gonna you know mess with stuff that's kind of just junk. You can sell your junk through here, especially if you have a high traffic. Traffic. And especially if you use the new top popular islands, you can you can get rid of a lot of your junk. So junk being like things that other people think that are not junk, things like coral, for example. So maybe you want to sell, you know, I've got, I'm going to sell like a bunch of mushrooms for hundred each or something. Then you can sell those. You can sell, let's see, I've got some seagrass. Maybe someone wants to buy some seagrass for hundred each. You can see like, maybe I don't really care about these items, but people are going to buy them because they think they're worth more. So that is how a player like me actually goes and trades is you're gonna typically have a bunch of vending machines and you're gonna buy and sell inside the same environment. So that's just a really, really great way for you to make a profit quickly. And if you watched my Noob to Pro video, that's how I got rich quick with that account is you just do a lot of this kind of trading back and forth. Now, the other way I used to trade a lot until I used, until now, if I go on there, I get bombarded with DMs. So I had to close my DMs, but I used to trade on the Discord a lot. And I'm gonna show you how to do that again. As of this video, there's a two minute slow mode. Um, so you gotta have a cool down of two minutes. Every time you post, you can only post one message every two minutes. I also have one of these on my Discord as well. You can see here, we do have a two minute cooldown on ours as well. So you can see here, you know, people are making posts every few minutes. Going back over here though. So one thing you're going to want to do is when you're here, you're going to click on the little search at the top and you're going to type in trading because you do want to isolate all of your searches to inside of the trading channel, right? And you hit space and you're going to type in whatever you're looking for. So if you're looking for someone that's actually selling, you know, maybe cry aqua, aqua marine. So you can type in in sell cry aqua and this is going to show you all of the results on the right here of people selling crystallized aqua and you can see here here's all the results so this is how i trade as i'll go through and this is how i also check prices as i'll do a search on these and i'll scroll down so someone's selling one for 2 million right here someone's selling it for 8.5 million someone's selling it for 10 million and you can kind of scroll through and, and you know, there's a lot of spammers unfortunately on this channel don't do anything outside of selling and buying through vending machines or else you're, you're probably going to get scammed so be sure you do everything through vending machines. If they try to tell you, go ahead and drop, just say, you know what, have a nice day and come back to here and look for the next person. And so that's how you really do it. This is one of the best ways to trade for sure. Um, but ultimately the best way to get rich quick in trades is going to be through trading items from new updates ASAP. So don't hold on. So a lot, here's, here's the thing that players do when a new update comes out, especially we remember, if you remember the star fruit update, you know, you get so excited, right? You go and get your first star fruit and you wanted to keep it because you know, it's going to, you know, they're going for 30 million plus for each seed. And oh my gosh, I got one. And it's really hard for you to sell that. You just got something that's incredibly important, incredibly valuable, and you just got one, right? The problem is, is you can buy them for cheaper later. So try to try your best to sell those right away. I sold one of my starfruit seeds for 35 million day one within the first, I think it was like maybe the first six hours of the game. People were just going crazy for those items. So that is a great way for you to get rich quick because what you do is you wait the next day and then you go buy them back up for, you know, maybe they're going 
going for 20 million or 15 million or 10 million the next day. And so now you just tripled your stock, right? And then what you do is you just go farm some more and farm some more. And so what you're gonna do is farm the things that are really going hot right now. So like crystallized aquamarine, you know, everyone went crazy to get that, you know, blueprint to buy it, to buy the books. And what you should be doing if you're trying to be a uh, seller, if you wanna be, get rich quick in this game, you should go out and farm those items, not to keep for yourself, but to go and sell to people, especially as part of new updates. So here's what the new price guide looks like. You can see here, you can actually sort things by name now. So you can go A through Z. You can sort the um, the actual merchant prices. So merchant price basically means here that this is what the vendors or NPCs are selling these for or buying them for. So you can sell certain things to the merchants outside. So that shows you what things are worth with the NPCs. We also have here the Discord trading. Well, here's, here's the kind of trending prices that you'll see often on the Discord trading channels. Here's what I think something should be worth or close to it. Um, these are the things that I would trade for either myself or what I would list it at. Here's what Junior Jack's price is. And we're probably going to add more guests to this list. And then, of course, here's the demand. Some of these are empty because I'm still filling them in. We just, I just literally today added all these items. You can see right here, there's over 300 items in this guide. So it is a little time consuming to go through all of these. But you, know, you can see here, demand. Demand basically means there's a lot of people that want something. So low demand would mean not a lot of people are looking for it or care about it. High demand would mean everyone wants this thing. So you're gonna, you're probably gonna be competing at prices. So what you know, you might think something's worth only a million, but if the demand's high, then you're gonna get in line, and the best bidder is gonna get it first, right? And then right here, the drop rarity. Drop rarity basically means how um, how hard is it to get. So in this case, these are. Um, these are actually limited, so you can't really get these anymore. These right here are rare drops, meaning they are kind of hard to get. And then right here, uncommon basically means they drop, but they drop more often than these, right? So this right here says game pass, and that's what those are. And then everything else that you can craft, as long as you have the materials, is gonna be considered a common. And then you can also sort by type. So are you looking for furniture, blocks, blueprints, and things like that, and you can sort by that as well. And so it's a really, really great way for you to be able to see what things are worth and what you should be listening things at or what you should be spending. If you see a price here, try to buy it for less if you're gonna if you see a price here try to sell it for more that's generally the best rule of thumb here is not to try to buy or sell at these exact prices but to try to go above and below depending on what you know always go in your favor first and then if you get desperate then you can kind of go straight for the price or less link to the price guide is in the description so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit that like button and smash the subscribe button again if you're new and i will see you all next time take it easy